DxO Photo Lab 8 versus Darktable. DxO Photo Lab 8 and Darktable are both raw processors designed for processing raw photos from your camera. But which one is better? Well, I use Darktable, but I've also tried Photo Lab 8, and I'm going to tell you five advantages of each over the other so you can decide which one is better for you. Advantages of DxO Photo Lab 8 over Darktable. DxO Photo Lab 8 is arguably easier to use for beginners, although both programs are really good. DxO definitely has a more gentle learning curve and usually one way to do something. Darktable in many regards is more powerful, but takes longer to learn and can be confusing to some. DxO has superior denoising. Without a doubt, DxO Photo Lab has superior denoising. That's because it has a machine learning noise reduction algorithm, and even its non-machine learning algorithm is superior to Darktable. You can still get good results in Darktable on noisy images, but usually that means using masks. DxO has easier sharpening. Although Darktable can sharpen really well, it's just easier to sharpen in DxO Photolab 8 with its lens modules, assuming your lens is supported. The tailor-made sharpening in DxO Photolab is really easy to use and has good default values. DxO Photolab is faster. Darktable runs decently on my Mac, but DxO Photolab just feels more snappy and faster. The difference is not great, but it's there. And finally, DxO Photolab supports more cameras. Actually, Darktable's camera support is pretty good. The majority of cameras are supported, but some formats, like the high efficiency format on some newer Nikon cameras and some other cameras, are supported in DxO Photolab, but not in Darktable. Moreover, camera support for DxO Photo Lab comes faster than camera support in Darktable. But what about Darktable? Does Darktable have any advantages over DxO Photo Lab? Well, actually it does, and here are five of them. Better masking. Without a doubt, Darktable's masking system is far more advanced and superior to DxO Photo Lab 8. DxO Photo Lab does have hue masking in some basic drawn masks, it's true but Darktable's drawn mask system is very flexible. And also, Darktable has a complete set of parametric masking tools where you can select by luminosity, hue, RGB lab variables, and saturation. Moreover, Darktable's masking system works for every module effortlessly, whereas DxO's masking system is a separate pane that only works with some adjustments. Without a doubt, Darktable's masking system destroys DxO's. Superior tone curve. Darktable's tone RGB curves and tone adjustments in general work better than DxO's tone curve, which seems to rapidly clip colors when used more heavily. More advanced adjustments. Darktable has some advanced adjustment modules that DxO Photolab 8 simply does not have, such as the tone equalizer and my favorite secret weapon, the custom lookup table. Because of Darktable's greater flexibility in this regard and the aforementioned masks, advanced editing is easier in Darktable. Darktable has vector scopes and waveforms. The old histogram is great, but for understanding tonal adjustments in specific parts of an image, it's great to have vector scopes and waveforms. In fact, I rarely use the histogram anymore and mostly use the waveform, which is superior to the histogram. It's amazing how this small extra feature can make such a difference but it really can help you understand your editing better. Darktable is free. DxO Photo Lab is $229 US dollars, whereas Darktable is free. Not only is Darktable free, it is also open source, programmed by many, and under a GPL license, so it's unlikely to ever become a commercial program. It's hard to beat free, especially when the program can stand up to commercial programs. Conclusion. So which of these programs should you use? Well, both are pretty good programs, and I like both. I prefer Darktable, but I suggest you try both to see which one fits your needs. I hope you found this video helpful in determining which of these raw editors is best for you. But if you did not find it helpful, I suggest shooting in JPEG.